Hello, welcome to this lecture of biomathematics. We have been discussing about diffusion in the last lecture, where we use ideas from vectors and calculus to derive the diffusion equation. We said that just by taking the continuity equation that the current from one side to the other side and you think about the current, we said that for the concentration to change at a particular place, whatever the current that is the flow that is coming in has to be more different cannot be equal to the flow that go out. If they are equal, the concentration at this point will not change. And from this just simple our common sense argument, we use mathematics which is we called we said it is like a language. So, we use the we use mathematics basically to express this idea that the current that flowing in has to be different from the current that is flowing out for the concentration at a particular point to change. And from this simple argument we derived an equation and that is the diffusion equation. That equation governs the diffusion of particles as we discussed. Today, we will discuss a little more about diffusion. There are very important relations that is related to diffusion. So, we will discuss some very important and interesting results associated or resulting from this equation. Uh, which are related to diffusion. So, today's lecture is basically again related to application of calculus and vector algebra in biology and we will again discuss diffusion. So, today again we will discuss the we will continue discussing diffusion and we will derive some interesting results interesting expressions related to diffusion based on what we learned so far. These are very important relations very famous relations, very useful in biology or and in many other fields. So, let us get started. So, we said that when you, so what, what is shown here is a tube. So, you have a tube at and you, this long tube and you introduce some particle at some particular position. Let, let us call x as the length along the tube. So, this is x equal to 0 and this is x equal to 0 and as we go is x is equal to increasing and x is decreasing. So, let us think of this an x axis uh, and there is in this tube we are introducing let us say we are putting some ink molecules and there is water imagine that there is water in this tube and we are introducing some ink molecules or protein molecules in this tube. So, that is shown here and what is shown at the bottom here? is the plot of concentration as a function of the x. So, this is x equal to 0. So, at this moment the concentration is only at x equal to 0 S somewhat almost like a line up with maybe a little more width, but essentially it is just a li like a line up. So, which says that the concentration is only the concentration everywhere else here here everywhere the concentration is 0 and the concentration is non zero only at x equal to 0. Only here you have particles and here, 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 here you have no particles. So, this is what this this picture is written in kind of a in the in the form of a graph here that is what is shown here whatever whatever is shown here is written in the form of a graph here. basically what you have here is that the, the, the physical picture is that you have a tube and in the middle of the tube you have some protein molecules. Some concentration, some the concentration of the protein molecules is only at x equal to 0 and nowhere else you have this protein molecules. How do we represent this, this kind of a thing mathematically? What is, what is, the, what is the equation that you will write? for representing things of this fashion in a mathematical form. So, we, we said that 
anything that we speak or any any idea that we see or any physical idea we can represent in the form of equations and that's kind of a language in itself so how do we how do we say this mathematically the fact that you have only concentration at one point and everywhere else it is zero it is shown graphically here just a line here and everywhere else this is zero so the way to show this mathematically it, it turns out that so if you have x equal to 0 and you have only at this particular point this is shown by so this is a function and it turns out that this function can be written as delta of x so this delta this famous function this is called this is mathematics this is called dirac's delta function basically this represents this represent this this is basically the, precisely to say what we just said that we have only con, only something only at some particular point everywhere else this is zero there are some particular properties for this for the dirac delta function we wouldn't go into this but what i'm trying to say is that we can represent this mathematically using this delta function so the concentration that you see here c of x if you wish can be written as a dirac delta function c of x can be written as so you can say c of x is proportional to is, is directly proportional to the delta of x is like dirac delta function so this is a way of telling this mathematically so now let, let us think about let us think physically for the moment let us just keep the mathematics apart for the mo for a moment and so we know that we have a tube here and we have some protein molecules here and there is water in this you can think of this as protein molecules or even ink molecules or any 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 molecules here and we call it at time equal to zero this is what the thing you see now think of this as the time goes what will happen let's say after 10 minutes if you look at this tube what will you see you will see that these molecules would have diffused this way and this way they just diffuse this way and diffuse this way so they would have diffused either along this tube so what do we see you will see this look at here they have diffused along this way so there are some molecules here some molecules here but still majority of the molecules here so this is what you see after 10 minutes 10 minutes you after 10 minutes you see that there are many molecules still at the center at x equal to 0 and many molecules a few of them are here and few of them here and if you represent this graphically you can represent it this particular way the concentration if you plot as a function of x what you would get is that at far away the concentration is very less and at the middle the concentration is large so forget what the form of this curve what is the equation here but there is some particular form with a mathematical this is graphically this concentration can be represented by this particular graph that is it is a it is, it is a peak at the middle that means still majority of the molecules are in the middle very few of them are towards the ends as you go along far away from the center either to the left or to the right you have fewer molecules and there is no particular reason that right is very different from the left because if there are two of them 100 or if the 20 of them diffusing to the right you might as well have 20 of them diffusing to the left i mean there is no symmetry symmetrical they are symmetric like left and right are symmetric to each other there is no particular reason that left is different from the right on this on this on this particular tube 
So, therefore, the concentration on an average on the left and the right will be the same. There is no particular reason that more of more will diffuse to the left or more will diffuse to the right. So, this function will be symmetric along x equal to 0. So, you have a function which is essentially so you you at the begin to begin with you had this x axis. So, this is x going to if you go if you think of this let us say you are going to plus infinity and this is so this is plus infinity and this is minus infinity. Let us say this is x is going this way to begin with you had just one line as a concentration. So, this was a concentration to begin with. So, this is t equal to 0. Now, as the time went as the time went the concentration. So, if you take this x axis this is minus infinity this is plus infinity this is 0. So, this is 0 here what you would see is that you would see kind of a nice symmetric thing like this. I mean maybe what I drew may not be perfect, but uh, I wanted to have the peak at 0 here this is peak at 0 and symmetric about this as it goes to infinity. So, this is the concentration as a function of x as it goes to infinity the concentration will go to 0. So, at you, you know that the, in the tube if you look at the tube here far away at infinity you will not find anything after 10 minutes because it would have yeah it would not have yet reached infinity. So, important point c at look at here c at infinity is 0 c at minus infinity is also 0. So, that means here and here the concentration will slowly is, is actually 0 far away the concentration is 0 and at the middle you have maximum concentration. So, you have why after 10 minutes this is what you expect, but the important point to note is that at infinity c at infinity and c at minus infinity has to be 0, because you can imagine after some 10 minutes the concentration it would not have reached infinity it would not it would not if you look at a distance far away if you do look at a far away distance it would not have yet reached that far. So, the concentration there has to be 0. So, by knowing just this that it has to be symmetric and that the concentration the molecules would not have reached at infinity or far away we can derive very interesting results. This is some two physical things we have to know that after it will have such a shape and it will have a symmetric shape around x equal to 0 and that concentration will be 0 far away. I mean it would not have reached there. No molecules would have reached far away from the initial position. If you look at far away from the initial position after 10 minutes molecules would not have reached there after any time after a finite time t it would not reach far some infinitely far distance. If you know this much we can derive some interesting stuff. So, what, what did we say? We said that we have what did we say? We have some concentration and c at x equal to infinity is 0 c at x equal to minus infinity it is 0. What does this mean? If you have in a pipe you if you had a pipe like this and if we had some molecules here uh, after any finite time they would not have reached far away infinities and minus infinities. Here the concentrations will be 0, here also the concentration will be 0, they will be still diffusing somewhere near the initial point. So, this is finite time at any finite time 
after 1 minute, 2 minutes, 3 minutes, 4 minutes, even after 10 minutes, it would not have gone that far. It will be still at a finite distance x, the concentration. So, knowing this much idea, so now if you know that it would not have reached here, the derivative, let us say del c by del x at x equal to infinity, this will also be 0, because since there is no molecules here, the c itself is not there. So, c cannot vary there, because c does not exist there. So, del c by del x will be 0. Here also del c by del x at minus infinity, when x equal to minus infinity, this will all be 0, because there is no molecules. So, the change in concentration will be anyway 0. So, if you by knowing this much idea, we can get some interesting results. So, let, let us go ahead and do this. So, now let, let me do some small, let, let us discuss another interesting fact. So, we know that we have a concentration C of x. So, what is integral C of x dx? So, at every point x, you have this concentration C. So, now what you are doing? You are doing summing over all the concentrations along x. So, that is integral C of x dx. So, what is this? This has to be the total concentration C t. This has to be total concentration C t, because this is the, now for simplicity for a, for a now, let, let me define as some new function called c tilde of x, which is c of x divided by this constant c t. Just for some convenience, I am doing this. This is just a trick, just for convenience, I am doing this. So, if you have such a function, what will be integral minus infinity to infinity? c tilde of x dx. This will be integral c of x dx divided by c t. We know that integral c t, c integral c of x dx is c t from here. So, this will be c t by c t, this will be 1. So, we have this new function, let us define and this function called c of c tilde of x, which is the c of x divided by some constant number, which is the total concentration. So, this what is the c tilde of x essentially? This is the fraction in some sense concentration divided by the total concentration. In some sense, you, you can think of this as a percentage or a fraction or in some sense this is like a fraction, but does not matter what does it mean. It is just a trick. We have this concentration, we divide it by a constant, we can always divide by a constant, mathematically nothing changes and we have a new function c tilde of x. Okay, so, we did some tricks, we just did realize that integral c of x dx is total concentration and we defined a new function called c tilde and we called it c of x by c t such that the integral c tilde of x dx is 1. That means, the to, this integral of this becomes 1. Okay. We have c tilde of x. Now, let us go back to the diffusion equation. So, what is the diffusion equation? Diffusion equation is this equation that we described last time that del c by del t at any point x and t at any point x, at any point time, time any, at any point x, at any time t is equal to d del square c by del x square. So, the change in the, how does the concentration change with time is this and how does the concentration change in space? x is the distance, space variable and this is essentially this is essentially how does the concentration change with space. 
and this how the space was changed with time. Concent how does the concentration changes with time? So, this relation is called the diffusion equation. Now, let us look at a few properties that we defined last time. We define x average. So, here x average is integral x c tilde x dx. So, t c tilde which is defined it is concentration divided by c t. So, this is some kind of a normalized distance, do not worry about this. So, this is the definite let us define some prop quantities called x average and x square average. What does this essentially mean? We will discuss this, we will discuss what does this essentially mean, what does this physically mean, but we can always define x average and x square average in this particular manner. So, if you do this x into c tilde of x dx and x square into c tilde of x dx, we get this x average and x square average. Now, the aim of this is that the aim of this is to derive some interesting results related to the RMS distance of diffusing particle, the root mean square distance. So, this is the definition of x square average. So, typically you know you might have seen it many places that you, you might have heard of RMS velocity, RMS very root mean square velocity. What is root mean square velocity? Like think about you had you had gas in a box and this gas molecules were freely moving in all directions. This ideal gas we had and we could calculate and in such cases you might have studied that v r m s the r root mean square velocity. This is related to the r t and temperature and all that. Uh, this is related to temperature we have resigned something called r m s velocity. So, the definition of this is that v square average this is root there is a mean this is mean uh, sorry this is square mean mean square. So, and this so, this is the definition of RMS velocity. You have find the root mean and square root mean square. Similarly, here you have particle in a tube going this way and that way they are diffusing and what we want is x square average root. So, this is you can say x RMS the RMS distance the root mean square distance that this particle will diffuse with time. Like if you wait 10 minutes what is the root mean square distance this particle will diffuse. So, let us think about just one particle here look at this one particle this one particle will can go a little here then it here. So, on an average we also can find out how much what is the average distance and what is x square average this is what we want to find out and this is what we are defined here. So, let us def we have defined x average as this and x square average as this. Okay, now, let us calculate this now how do we calculate. So, we had this diffusion equation which is del c by del t is d del square c by del x square. I can divide both side by C t. So, C by C t is C tilde. So, I can write this as del C tilde by del t is del square C tilde by del x square, where C tilde is defined as C by C t. You just divide here by a constant, here also by this constant C t both sides. So, I divide by C t here, I divide by C t here. So, I divide by C t here, I divide by C t here. Since it is a constant, I, I can get this equation. Okay, so, now we have this equation. So, now that we have this equation del C tilde by del t is equal to d del square C tilde by del x square. 
I can multiply both sides. So, first let us first calculate x square average. I can multiply both sides with x square and integrate. So, let us do this. So, there is del by del t, I multiply with x square and there is c tilde and is equal to d del uh, I have x square I multiplied and I have del square c by del x square and I integrate both from minus infinity to infinity d x d x. So, what did I do? I just multiplied both sides with x square and integrated both sides. Nothing will change. I multiplied both sides with x square, I integrated both sides with respect to x. Now, here the derivative is with respect to time and this is a partial derivative. So, it does not matter whether I take the derivative outside and the integral is with respect to x. So, if the integral is with respect to x, you can take this del by del t outside because the result of this is anyway has nothing to do with time. See, sorry, this is this only depends on x. So, I get, whether I write x square del by del t inside or outside, it does not matter because the integral is only with respect to x and this is a partial derivative. So, I have this kind of an equation. So, what do we have? I multiply, what did I do? I had this equation. I multiplied both sides with x square and I integrated with dx. This is what I did. Okay. So, let us write it down once more to be clearly. So, we had del by del t of integral minus infinity to infinity x square c tilde of x d x is equal to d into integral minus infinity to infinity x square del c tilde by del x square d x. So, this is what we have and this is what precisely we have it here. Now, what is this part? What is x square c tilde of what is this? we just learn that we just define this as x square average. So, this 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 quantity we just, just defined this quantity as x square average. This quantity what what, what I put in this in this uh, around which I drew this line I ha we just define this as x square average. So, the left hand side is del by del t of x square average. So, now what is on the right hand side we have this. Now, you have some function x square some other function del c tilde by del x square. So, you have two functions which depends on x and we have to find out the integral of this. So, we have minus infinite plus function x square and another function del c tilde by del x square d x. So, now we have to find the integral of this. So, something that we learned in calculus we have to make use of this to get this. So, what did we learn in calculus? So, there is an interesting relation that we learned in calculus that we can make use here and what is that? So, we defined we learned that if you have two function u and v the we have u of x and v of x, we learnt that the derivative we learn something called product rule. The derivative of this we learnt, we learnt that d by d x of u v is u into d v by d x. plus v into d u by d x. We learn this in calculus, this is called we call it product rule. So, that is derivative of product of two function is first function to the derivative of the second function plus 
second function into the derivative of the first function. This is what we learned. Now, we can integrate this just like this. So, we can just multiply with this and integrate this and we can write this d x here. So, we can just integrate all throughout and get a relation. We can say u into d v by d x is equal to. So, we can write. So, what can I write? So, look at here. So, I can write u into integral d v by d x d x is equal to. So, this is equal to integral of d by d x of u v d by d x of u v d x minus I take this this side. So, I just rearrange this term I write this is equal to this minus this I can take this term this side. So, u integral this minus this term which is integral v d u by d x d x d u by d x into d x. So, some we are just making use of something that we learned in calculus that we use the product rule and using this product rule use using this product rule uh, look at here using this product rule uh, we rewrote it in terms of integrals and is integral u d v by d x is this. So, in other words I can rewrite this thing I can rewrite this thing. So, you know d v by d x into d x you can write this basically. So, let, let us write this little more carefully u into integral d v by sorry I, I just made a small mistake when I wrote here uh, this integral has to be here integral u d v by d x because this is what we had here integral u d v by d x is equal to d by d x of u v d x minus v d u by d x. So, when I write little more carefully I have to write. So, what do I write? Integral u d v by d x is equal to d by d x of u v d x. So, derivative of function integral of a derivative is the function itself because you know integral we said is an anti derivative. So, integral of d by d x of u v is u v itself. So, this is essentially the u v in the limits. So, if you have this integral if you have this integral from minus infinity to infinity all this integral will be from minus infinity to infinity if this integral is from minus infinity to infinity what you would have is in the limits minus infinity to infinity. Think about this this is what you will get just carefully do this integral u v d v by d x into d x will be equal to u v minus integral v d u by d x into d x. So, this is is called integrate by parts you have any function u d v by d x you can write in this particular form. So, now look at this equation look at this equation what do we have here what do we have here we have in this side a function let us call this. So, what did, what did we have here we had we had an equation which is del by del by del t of x average is equal to integral minus infinity to infinity d times x square del c by del square c tilde by del x square d x. This is what we had. So, we can always define this as u x square as u and this as d v d x. So, let us take x square as u and del square c by del x square as d v d x. 
So, what is this? This will be integral u d v d x d x. So, you can use this formula now to do this integration of this. So, if you look at this carefully, let us write down on the only the right hand side, the right hand side. If you write down the right hand side only, what do we have is that d into integral x square del square c tilde a by del x square d x as integral I call this x square as u and this as d v by d x into d x and we said that this is just nothing but integral u v in the limits minus integral v d u v d u by d x minus infinity infinity. Now, here u is x square this we take as u and d v by d x is del square c tilde by del x square. So, what is v if this is d v by d x? v will be del c tilde by del x. So, the derivative of this will be del square c tilde by del x square. So, you will get this. So, if you apply this formula and rewrite this integral, what you would get is the following. So, look at here. So, you will get u which is x square into v in the limits minus integral v which is del c tilde by x into d x u v d u derivative of x square which is 2 x. So, if you apply that formula that is integrate by parts do that carefully you will get exactly this. You apply that formula take x square as u and del c tilde by del x as v you will get exactly this formula. Now, what is the derivative at infinity and minus infinity? We said that the derivative at infinity and minus infinity there are there is not anything. So, this derivative at both the places will go to 0. So, this term will go to 0 because there is no concentration at infinity and minus infinity. There is no derivative also because there is no change in concentration either because there is not anything at all. So, essentially or in other words it is, it is symmetric whatever on the left side has to be equal to the right side. So, this term will go to 0 uh, and this term will go to 0 and this. So, what remains is just this what remains is just this. So, del by del t of x square average has to be minus I take this 2 outside 2 d minus infinity to infinity del c tilde by del x into x d x. So, you have this function now. Now, you can do the same way integrate by parts once more. So, now let us see what we have in hand. What we have in hand is that look at what we have in hand. We have in hand is del by del t of x square average is minus 2 d into minus infinity to infinity x del c tilde by del x d x. Again we can do this integrate by parts. We can take this x as u and this as d v by d x or del v by del x if you want and you can integrate this by parts by the same formula that we used and what do we get? What you would get is that again let us say x is u x is u. So, u into v in the limits minus v d u v is c tilde and d u is d x which is 1 sorry uh, 
which is the derivative of x is what d x by d x is 1. So, what you will get is 2 d into integral c of x d x. Again using symmetry arguments and that the concentration anyway at infinities will be 0, you can show that this term is 0. Why is this 0? Because the concentration at infinity and the concentration at minus infinity is anyway 0. So, this term has to be 0. Now, this term is integral 2 d 2 d integral c of x c tilde of x d x. So, what we have essentially at the end of the day, if you say that this if you equate this term to 0, because the concentration at infinity and minus infinity is 0. So, if you equate this term to 0, what you have is that del by del t of x square average is equal to 2 d integral c tilde of x d x minus infinity to infinity. At the beginning, we said that this is 1, that it is the definition of c tilde of, we define c tilde of x such a way that integral c tilde of x d x is 1. So, now what we have? Del by del t of x square average is 2 d, this is what we have. So, what do we have? Del by del t of x square average is 2 d. So, now let us integrate both sides and see what we get. So, what we get is that, so if we have since this look at here, since this is integral c tilde f x d x is 1, we have del by del t of x square average is 2 d. So, we have x square average is equal to 2 d t. So, we have x square average is 2 d t. This is a very interesting and very important relation as far as diffusion is concerned very widely used in many, many contexts in biology and in many places. So, what did we get? We got x square average is 2 d t. We can say x r m s is square root of x square average is square root of 2 d t. What does that tell you? what does this tell you? So, this has a lot of significance. So, let us think about for a minute about the significance of this result. So, look at here this once more this result. Look at this x square average is 2 d t. What is x square average means? The RMS or the RMS distance means the average distance that this would go to either side. That is RMS distance this molecule will diffuse in a time t is x r m s. So, what does this mean? If you wait for 100 seconds, so let us say, so let us d is a constant, t is time. So, let us, let we know that let, let us take for example, let us take for example, so let, let us take this x r m s is equal to root of 2 d t. This is a very famous relation. Now, let us see what is it. Let us take d is equal to. So, what is the unit of d here? d will have a unit which is. So, let, let us take d is 1. Let us say it is meter square per second. This will have a unit of meter square per second. Diffusion coefficient has a unit of u meter square per second. We will come to this. We will we will see how this is coming. But for the moment, let us take d as some number, which is 1 meter square per second given to you. Now, the question is, let us say when t is equal to 10 second, how far this would have diffused? So, x r m s is equal to root of 2 into diffusion is 1 into 10. 
So, this will diffuse the distance of root 20 meter, root 20 meter. Now, let us say after 100 seconds, when t is equal to 100 seconds, how much this will have diffused? When you take t equal to 100 seconds, what do you get? x r m s is equal to root of 2 into d is 1 itself, this is 100. So, you know this is 200. So, what is this? This is square root of 2 into 100. So, 100 square root of 100 is 10. So, this is essentially what do we get? Root of 200 meter. So, this is root of 20 and this is root of 200. So, now we can write root of 200 as 10 into root 2. So, this you can write root 10 into root 2 and this is 10 into root 2. So, we see in this particular way we can calculate how much distance it will travel in time t. If it is 100 seconds, it would have gone. So, you know root of 20, what is root of 20? So, this is like root of 16 is 4, root of 25 is 5. So, root of 20 is somewhere in between 4 and 5. So, let us look at here. So, first case, first when t is equal to 10 seconds, we get x r m s is equal to root of 20. We know that this has to be 4 point something, because root of 25 is 5, root of 16 is 4. So, this is 4 point something. Calculate it yourself, what is root 20? And what is in 100 seconds, that is the time changed by 10 times. If you wait 10 times longer, it would have diffused a distance root of 200. What is root of 100? Root of 100 is root of 100 is 10. Uh, so, what, what, what root of 100 is 10. So, this is little above 10. So, root of 15. So, this is this is some quantity much larger than that. So, so, uh, so this is basically what you get. You can write it as root of 200 can be written as root of 2 into root of uh, sorry this is wrong. Uh, so, the, what, what will be this number? This number will be like something between uh, very close to 15, because we know that root of 225 is root of two, 200 is. Uh, so, this is something close to 15. So, this is some, some number which is very little less than 15. So, calculate this number yourself. So, even though the time increased 10 times here, it did not travel 10 times, it only travelled much less than 10 times. So, this is what essentially it says, even though the time increases by 10 times, the distance travelled will be much less than 10 times. So, let us take another example, let us take, so what we have is x r m s is equal to root of 2 d t and let us now calculate, let, let us ask the question. So, let us do in another way, let us add t is equal to x square average. So, this is what we had 2 d t is x square average. So, let us say t is equal to x square average by 2 d. So, now let us ask the question, if we can, you can ask the question again, do it yourself, ask this question, if you want something to diffuse 
let us say if it is diffuse 1 micron, let us take the example of some more protein molecule, let us say actin molecules and ask the question, what is the time it takes to diffuse 1 micron and ask the question, how far, how, how long it will take, how much time, how long it will take to diffuse twice the distance as 2 micron. So, such kind of things can be calculated from what we learned so far. So, just like what we did now, we can also calculate x average, which we will discuss later, but this is a very important relation, which we used in many, many different places, many different occasions both in biology, chemistry, physics, chemical engineering, any field you take pretty much this relation is used that is the x square average is 2 d t. If and this is a very important consequence and anything that will diffuse, if you wait 10 times longer, it will not go 10 times farther, it will only go much less than the 10 times, much less than 10 times. So, that is the whole message. We just saw that if you, we just saw that if you wait 10 times more time, the distance that will be travel will be much less than the 10 times. So, essentially, what to summarize, the lecture what we learn today is a very important relation. So, this is our summary just one equation x square average is 2 d t. So, this is our summary for today because this is a very important relation in biology, in physics. If you have learned spectroscopy or any many many different areas you might you might come across this relation. So, just realize that without solving the diffusion equation, we started from this equation without solving this equation by doing a trick by just realizing that the at infinities the concentration will be 0, we found that x square average is 2 d t. So, with this important relation, we will stop today's lecture. We will continue a little more about diffusion in the coming lecture. Very and there is another important relation. We will discuss this in, the, in that in the next lecture. So, for this lecture, uh, this lecture, let us stop it here now. Bye.